<laughs> you write it in your book. And thank you. Maybe if we could shut this for a little. And could our folks who are who have stuff to say, could you come on up at this point? And then you guys can go and sit. Thank you. Yeah, in your spot. Marilyn doesn't need to sit with that close to me. Actually, I was thinking we should have a special chair. <laughs> <laughs>
He needs a curse. I gotta dig up a curse of handwriting book and send it to him. <laughs> Before I 
quite prepare what I said. I, something somebody just said reminded me, you know, if you look in the Terrible High School 1955 yearbook, I find it um, kind of ironic. My mother was the only female in the high school band. So that tells you how far young women have come in our society today. So if you look at the high school band now, I think there's more girls than boys, actually. So anyway, um, 60 years. What can you say to that? People work a job nowadays for six years, and they think it's forever. Did you know that 60 years translates to well over 2,760 Sundays worked? And that's accounting for vacation time, by the way. So <coughs> that's 2,760 Sundays that weren't spent camping at the beach or enjoying other weekend pastimes. When I was a child, we would leave on vacations on Sunday after church and stop for a picnic lunch. That's what I call commitment. And that doesn't include weddings, funerals, choir rehearsals, and other special services. Do you know how many weddings you've played for or funerals? He, she'd have to look that up. It's probably documented. <laughs> I read an article that estimated 60 years of playing the organist works out to about 10,000 hours of playing. You were organist before I was born. I don't remember anyone else being organist here. And I'm thinking there are very few people here that could remember who was organist before you. Do you have few Yeah, a few of this is part, right? <coughs> I think we've all heard the joke that you love to say that they hired you until they could find someone and then they just never looked. So I guess that's on the trustees, right? Okay. So I grew up hearing stories about how my grandfather worked so hard at fundraising so you could have the beautiful organ we have today for you to play. And I remember the fundraising to install the chimes after his death. It still filled the church with joy and I thought it was ironic you used them today. Upon his death, you insisted upon playing for his funeral, which of course led to the question when I got married, do you want to be mom or do you want to be organist? <laughs> for those of you that don't know, it was once she chose not to play, thank goodness for Jeanette Brown. <laughs> when I grew up, Thursday nights were spent at the church playing between the pews while the choir practiced. Maybe once in a while I'd get to sit next to mom and make believe I was playing on the wood next to her. Once I could read music, I got promoted to page turner, and then of course a member of the choir. As I was trying to think of what to say yesterday, I googled organist 60 years. I mean, isn't that what we all do now when we don't know what to say or do? We google, right? To my surprise, there were actually four newspaper articles from the fall of 2019 with organists that had celebrated 60 years as well this past fall. So there must have been a shortage of organists in 1959 also. <laughs> so for the record, in case you want to get in touch with them, because I think it's like an elite group, you got Dot Elliott from the Pinewood Baptist Church in Columbia, South Carolina. There's Daryl Cornell from the First Baptist Church in Troy, Ohio. There's Jim Grace at the United Methodist Church in Liberty Mill, New Jersey, who also noted that organ playing seems to be a dying art. There's a shortage of organists. And I'm sure you can attest to that, because I believe it was 19 calls to find substitutes for eight Sundays. And that resulted in three people, I think, to cover when she had her hip replaced. But I thought Veda Jean Roof from New Bethlehem Presbyterian Church in New Bethlehem, Pennsylvania had the best advice for you. She said, I often laugh when someone complains that the organist plays too loud or the prelude was too long. So I just tell them, if I'm not doing it right, they can take my place and let me do the complaining. <laughs> Tom said it's not a retirement. I'm a big person on goal setting, you know that, so I've helped set your next goal. So, <laughs> Walter, <laughs> Walter Miklis from the Zion Lutheran Church in Clark, New Jersey, just retired this fall after 74 years. Oh. So it looks like we have more celebrations to come. <laughs> Congratulations and much love. <laughs> I remember rehearsals on Thursday nights and hearing the music that I am 
absolutely loved. When we started an anthem, it didn't always sound wonderful, but with patience, Marilyn's, and maybe some reworking of the notes and rests, again, Marilyn's, uh, by the time we performed it, it sounded the way it should. And I have always felt that the music we sang here was then an, just as an important part of the service as were all the hymns we sang, the prayers we said, and even the sermons that we heard. The other word I thought of was fun. It was fun to learn the music and feel a part of the worship time in this church. And I recall, before the choir was remodeled, um, the choir was like in a straight line. And I frequently stood at the end of the soprano line, and Sebastio was on my left. And as the alto line began, Sheila Strieber was on my right. We laughed a lot. I can remember holding my music up over my mouth so Marilyn wouldn't know we were laughing. But somehow, I think she always knew. And one more thing. I think God hears music above any words we might say, or even before our thoughts come together. And I know over the years, God has certainly heard a lot of love and faith from this house of worship, thanks to this lady. So thank you, Marilyn, for so much. Remember that 
French twist she'd have in the back of her hair that she wore there. I always thought, I'd like to wear my hair that way sometime. It never happened, so I did that. But thank you for wonderful memories and wonderful times.
But I do want to play some of that song's inspiration. Hopefully that record player is loud enough. You're going to hear the Reverend Dwight Giuliani introducing it. You're going to hear my high school Sunday school teacher and Marilyn's dad say a few words, Uma Toom, and then the song she wrote for us, Song Inspiration. Thank you. 